We're here with the 10 greatest video games you'll never get to play. Gotham by Gaslight was set to be an adaptation of the famous Batman story arc of the same name, where the Dark Knight himself takes on Jack the Ripper in the middle of a Victorian city. The game boasted some impressive physics, promised steampunk inspired visuals and a very innovative story. Sadly, THQ were unable to secure the rights to the series, and it wasn't until Arkham that we'd finally be able to play a well-rounded Batman title. Now chances are if you're British, you've more than likely heard of The Getaway. As a series, it was Grand Theft Auto meets classic British gangster flicks, a truly standalone game if there ever was one. The original two titles went down incredibly well on the PS2, so it was only right that we expected a sequel on the PS3. However, even though Sony showed off a demo that beautifully rendered all of Piccadilly Circus, nothing actually came of it. For now, it's pretty much presumed to be cancelled. So we all know the Wii was a huge deal when it turned up to the party in 2005, but for the sake of hanging with the big boys like Xbox and PlayStation, it always needed to attract something more than just children. Therefore, Nintendo commissioned the development of a title known only as Sadness. It was a psychological horror, focusing on disorienting and scaring the player through non-conventional means. This aspect, partnered with black and white visuals and a supposedly massive storyline with hours of gameplay, got a lot of people excited. Following its announcement in 2006, Sadness was plagued with artistic direction troubles and infighting before eventually disappearing into thin air. The title's more apt than ever these days. Back when the GameCube was struggling to find an audience, Capcom decided to help out by announcing five exclusive major titles for the console. One of these was Dead Phoenix. It was set to be released alongside the massive Resident Evil 4, as well as quirkier titles like Beautiful Joe, Killer7 and Piano 3, all to help boost the GameCube sales. However, the only thing that surfaced was an initial gameplay trailer. It looked a bit like Kid Icarus ran headfirst into the first Devil May Cry, and quite frankly, who wouldn't want to play that? In the end, after the initial announcement, Capcom fell silent and both they and Nintendo refused to even comment the game actually existed even over a decade later. Now we all got very excited when Guillermo del Toro got involved with the new Silent Hills project, but in 2013, the acclaimed director himself was at the helm of another game called Insane. We only ever got to see a teaser title reveal, but given del Toro's penchant for horror, it was surely going to be absolutely terrifying. The game was unfortunately dropped when THQ went under, but del Toro remains positive that it'll see the light of day at some point. Now we've all been treated to some awesome Star Wars titles over the years, but most of them have been Jedi or Sith focused. Star Wars 1313 promised to take us into the criminal underbelly of Coruscant, removing the sheen and clinical cleanliness of the series' usual space setting and throwing it out in favour of dirty underworld cyberpunk hangouts. It might have been more Blade Runner than Star Wars, but it was definitely something fans were itching for as soon as it was announced. Then in 2013, the House of Mouse bought out LucasArts, bringing production on the game to a complete standstill. It's widely accepted that Sid Meier completely revolutionised strategic gaming. From pirates to golf, from trains to entire civilizations, anything the man touches turns to gold. Why? Because he spearheads genuinely responsive, innovative games that cater to an entire corner of the market's needs. And he does it so well that just seeing his name on something is enough of a reason to buy it for a hell of a lot of people. But back in the day, there was another title that never came to fruition, and that was Sid Meier's Dinosaurs. If his other titles are anything to go by, it would have been the best dinosaur title this side of Turok. Fallout Now and Fallout Back in the Day are two entirely different beasts. The series began as an isometric spiritual successor to Wasteland, but back before Bethesda had even thought about buying out the franchise, an entirely different Fallout 3 was originally planned. Subtitled Van Buren, the game was going to continue in the classic isometric style, but it was eventually cancelled by developers Interplay. At least Fallout still continued, even if it was alongside a major shift in style. A few plot points from Van Buren even made it into New Vegas, so the game didn't entirely go wasted. StarCraft is just one of those massive franchises that swallows up entire lifetimes if you let it. It's up there alongside Final Fantasy and Warcraft. But back in 2002, a series changing title going by the name of StarCraft Ghost was set to take the franchise away from strategy and into the stealth action genre. The gameplay that we saw showed us some awesome character abilities and a world that up until that point we'd been floating above, but we never truly experienced it firsthand. Because of all of this, the game was obviously hugely anticipated. But in 2006, to the dismay of gamers all around the world, Ghost was placed on indefinite hold by Blizzard. Finally at number 1, a franchise that we all hold dear, and an instalment that would surely have gone on to have a massive fanbase if it had got the green light. Lord of the Rings The White Council Originally planned as an open world RPG, it would allow the player to traverse Middle Earth as they saw fit, following a predetermined story, or carving their own. We were promised the ability to step into the shoes of a man, elf, dwarf or hobbit, with the aim of the game being to build renown to the point of becoming a member of the legendary White Council themselves. The game was called off in 2007, apparently quite close to completion, 
but the only proof that we have of its existence is a few measly pieces of concept art, but at least they look pretty cool. So, was there anything that you were looking forward to that actually ended up getting cancelled? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to check out the website for more awesome gaming content.